Often new users are thrust into creating parts and features in Creo Parametric without much explanation or understanding of what they are. So I want to take a few minutes to address that. First, let's talk about what a part is. And in practical terms, it's a kind of model in Creo Parametric and it represents a physical object and it usually has mass and volume. You'll find that in some situations, you'll have parts that consist of all non-solid geometry, in other words, surfaces, and in those situations, they do not have mass. Parts are stored with a file extension that ends in .prt, and a block is a collection of objects called features. And the way that we create our parts is that we start with one feature and we progressively add features to the model until we come up with our intended geometry. Besides these features, parts can also contain other objects like annotations as you see in the image in the bottom right hand corner which provide what's called PMI, product and manufacturing information, to explain how the part should be built and inspected. Besides the annotations, it can also contain cross sections and things called component interfaces to define how they are placed inside of larger models called assemblies. When you create a part, there are four different subtypes. You can create solid parts, and that's probably the most common. And then you also have sheet metal parts. And sheet metal parts are a little different than solid parts because they have tools that enable you to create your parts that are usually thin-walled with a constant thickness. There are also bulk items, and bulk items represent things that you want to appear in your bill of materials, but you're not physically going to model. And those include things like paint or lubricant or glue. Uh, again, you're not going to model it up with any geometry, but you want it represented in the assembly. And also the other type of part is a harness part, which is used in cabling. And there is another special kind of part model called a skeleton, and that's used in top-down design. Skeletons will contain geometry that's going to be used or referenced by multiple components. For example, it could contain what's called the outer mold line or OML in some industries. Now let's talk about some of the theoretical aspects of a part and what would make a part. So generally, parts are things that are manufactured out of a single material, but that's not always true. Sometimes you will create a part model that's going to be made out of a composite. So it could have multiple different materials in there, like a, a carbon fiber composite. Also, sometimes a part model will represent multiple manufacturing processes. For example, you could have a part that is injection molded and then has over mold applied to it. And another situation that you'll see is that sometimes a part model will also include some of the inserts or fasteners uh, that are included really in a higher level, but for simplicity, people will model the part that will include the inserts for the fasteners. And another situation is that you might actually represent assemblies as single parts. And common areas where I see this are circuit boards that are designed in other packages uh, like ORCAD or something, and then you bring it into Creo Parametric and you bring in that circuit board as a single part. Also, you might get some components that are off the shelf, uh, COTS components they're referred to, that you get from different websites, and you'll import them as a step or an IGIS file. And rather than representing all the components from that off the shelf, product, you will just import it as a single part, so it just represents a single line item in your bill of materials. Another aspect of what makes a part, usually it's an object that is manufactured and controlled as a discrete object. In other words, hey, we're going to make this particular widget, we're going to make this particular bracket. But as I mentioned on the previous slide, there is a subtype of parts called bulk items. And if you take a look at the image on the right, there is our bill of, excuse me, our model tree from an assembly, and it's got a line in there for some primer paint. 
And again, we're not physically going to model it, but we do want it represented. And there you can see it has a special symbol that looks like a bucket. And what it comes down to is whether you model or represent something as a part or an assembly really is going to be determined by your particular situation and how you manage your downstream processes. And by downstream processes, I mean things like manufacturing, procurement, inspection, inventory, and so on. There is one confusing aspect if you're using Creo Parametric with Windchill as your CAD data management system. In Creo Parametric, you have parts, and in Windchill, you have parts, but they're not the same thing. In Creo Parametric, as we described on the previous couple slides, you are creating these parts, these .prt files that represent physical objects, and usually you're going to place them into assemblies and they're represented by a blue cube symbol in Creo Parametric. Because Windchill was created by a company that was acquired by PTC, they already had something called parts in there. So parts in Windchill are different than parts in Creo Parametric. And the confusing thing is, is that a Windchill part can represent Creo Parametric parts, and they can also represent Creo Parametric assemblies. Besides that, Parts in Windchill are used to manage other different objects. For example, things like documents. Maybe you want to represent an instruction manual or a warranty card in your product. Or maybe you want to represent your packaging. Maybe you have the peanuts that you use to pack something in and the box that contains it. Basically, anything that your enterprise wants to manage can be represented as Windchill parts. And some of the different uses for these windchill parts are bomb management and supplier management. So when you check an assembly from Creo Parametric into windchill, that's going to create what's known as the E-bomb or the engineering bomb. And that's the bill of materials as the designers created it. But typically what you find is that the way that the product is going to be manufactured is going to be different than the way that the engineers had put it together inside of Creo Parametric. And so they need to rearrange the bill of materials and it's called E-bomb, M-bomb transformation. And these windchill parts can be used for performing that. And besides creating manufacturing bombs, you can create other different kinds of bombs like purchasing bombs. For example, you might have a bunch of fasteners in your assembly and you want to group them all together to represent how they're going to be purchased. Or maybe you're going to have some components that are actually purchased as a single unit together. For example, sometimes with antennas, you're going to get the actual antenna, you're going to get the base, you're going to get some cables that go along with it. And those would be separate items in your engineering bomb, but you want to represent them together in the purchasing bomb as, hey, we're going to buy this antenna as a single package. And some other uses for bomb management are for kitting. Uh, for example, you want to arrange how things are going to be taken from inventory and organized so that it can go to the manufacturing floor and be put together. And also you might create special bills of material for replacement parts as well. In terms of supplier management, you have the objects that are created inside of Creo Parametric. And again, I'll go back to this idea of a fastener. So you're going to have some kind of socket head cap screw and you can get it from multiple different manufacturers and vendors and so these windchill parts can represent oh okay here's this fastener that we get from this company here's a fastener from another company uh, and also with connectors and cabling that's an another very common use where hey you have some kind of standard d38999 connector and you have a special windchill part that re represents when you buy it from mouser or when you get it from digikey or when you get it from amphenol so on and so forth and because it can be confusing talking about parts that are created in creo parametric versus parts that come from windchill i prefer to call the windchill parts wt parts i believe the wt stands for wind chill type or call them enterprise parts and in wind chill 
the parts are represented by a gear symbol and the color of the gear can mean different things so for example if you have a gray gear that is something that comes over from creole parametric but the manufacturer windshield parts and vendor parts will be different colors now let's talk about features and as i mentioned earlier a part model consists of features and features are the basic building blocks for defining the geometry in your model and most of the features are created from the model tab in part mode which you can see in the image one important aspect of parts is that they or excuse me of features is that they have parent child relationships whenever you create a new feature you have to reference existing features and existing geometry in the model that new feature that you're creating is going to be the child of the entities that you referenced and the entities that you reference those are going to be the parents of the new feature that you are creating and your parent child relationships determine how your parts are parametric and what we mean by that is when you make a change to one object that's going to propagate changes throughout your model and the way that they're propagated is through those parent child relationships another important aspect of modeling in creo parametric is that you have a model tree that lists the features in your part in the order in which they are regenerated and the order in which your features are created and the order that they appear in the model tree also has effects on how changes are propagated throughout the model now note that most features are created in your parts but you can also create features at the assembly level and typically those are non-solid features like datums and also non-solid surface features you can also create features that remove material for example holes and extrudes and those are what are referred to as assembly level features and they typically represent operations that occur during the assembly process where parts are put together and you want to match drill some holes between different components to make sure that the fasteners are going to line up through them and there is a very special case in which features can add geometry add material at the assembly level and that's if you're using the welding module but for the most part features cannot add material to your assemblies uh, they can only add material when they're created in parts now let's talk about the different types of features that you have in Creo parametric and I mentioned datum features and datum features are things like planes axes points coordinate systems and curves and those are imaginary features that we create in our models in order to excuse me in order to manipulate and create our solid and non-solid features that have volume and or mass besides our datum features we have what are called base features and the base features generally follow what's called the Pareto principle whereby the about 20 percent of your features are responsible for creating 80 percent of the geometry in your model and usually after you have your datums in a particular part then you're going to create base features in order to add and remove the most geometry and some of the base features include things like extrudes revolves sweeps swept blends and blends besides these different base features you have surface specific features and I want to make uh, a point that a base feature things like extrudes revolve sweeps and blends can create either solid geometry or non-solid geometry some of the different surfacing commands mainly create non-solid geometry uh, for example there's a tool like the boundary blend there's also a fill command which allows you to create a flat surface there is a module called isdx that allows you to create what are called freeform surfaces surfaces that you create by dragging and manipulating curves and surfaces in three-dimensional space and also there is the freestyle feature for subdivisional modeling and uh, one thing to know is that the freestyle feature actually creates solid geometry and another kind of surface feature is the restyle feature that's part of the reverse engineering extension which you can use to bring in point clouds and then create surfaces over them and then solid geometry and 
One of the confusing aspects of this is that you have a style feature, a freestyle feature, and a restyle feature, and they all do different things. Another class of features are called engineering features, and these used to be re referred to as pick and place features, and those are features in which Creo Parametric already knows the general shape, and so you're going to define some references in order to locate them in the model. And those are things like holes, rounds, chamfers, shells, draft, and cosmetic features like cosmetic uh, sketches, cosmetic threads. There are editing features, and for editing features, most of these commands are grayed out until you select something in the model. And that is a workflow that is known as object action. You select something and then the command is available. And so these editing commands allow you to duplicate features, and those include things like patterns, mirror, and copy and paste and copy and paste special. But there are also editing commands that are used to create and modify surfaces and curves. And those include commands like trim, merge, extend, offset, intersect, project, and thicken, and solidify, and also the warp command. There is another group of features that are called construction features and tweak features, and most of these do not appear in the interface by default. You usually have to add them, and these are older features from the pro engineer days from 20 almost 30 years ago and they're not used that much and they have a bit of a clunky interface and those include what are called anatomic features which have names like lip ear and neck and there are a bunch of obsoleted features that need to be enabled via a config.pro option in order to be visible and those are features that are called things like shaft local push radius dome there's a solid freeform and a surface freeform feature other types of features include what are called data sharing features and data sharing features are often used as part of the top-down design process in which you want to communicate geometry from one model to another model to make sure that if one thing changes other thing changes the way that you want them to and some of the different data sharing features include features like copy geometry shrink wrap merge inheritance and the publish geometry feature and another class of features are analysis features, and these are features that perform calculations on the model and then generate parameters and datums. So, for example, you could perform a mass properties calculation and then create parameters for the part's mass and its volume and also create datum points or coordinate systems at the center of gravity of that part. And you can create some analysis features with the base package of Creo Parametric, but others require the behavioral modeling extension. Uh, for example, creating feasibility and optimization features requires this BMX extension. Also, you can create parameters from a calculation using the base package, but you can't create datums like that coordinate system at the center of gravity of a part. And Another class of features are called user-defined features, and this is where you take other features in your model. Maybe you have an extrude and a rib and some rounds and some draft and a hole, and then you're going to group them together, and then you can store this in an external file, and that external file ends in a .gph file extension. And that way you can take that group of features and place it over and over again, either in the model in which you created it or other models. And that way you can help promote standards across your company or your organization to make sure that you're using the same kinds of shapes and geometry over and over again. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.